uh, Matthew, thank you so much for being on the show with me today. And I would love for you to uh, give your introduction to my audience. Yeah, my name is uh, Matteo Spada and uh, I came from Italy and uh, I always work in the, in the IT field. And after the, the, the school, uh, I start to work as a system administrator. And also I currently work as system administrator in the cloud environment like AWS. And, uh, but at the same time, uh, I always had the, the idea to create something for, uh, for myself. I always had this dream in mind, you know? And uh, the most simple way to realize this dream today for me is uh, learn how to code because uh, you can start uh, basically with uh, zero investment and uh, you can build something to yourself and uh, uh, transform your idea, your idea in reality uh, very fast, you know? And uh, I start to learn uh, uh, how to code in, when I was uh, 27. So a little bit late <laughs> because uh, people usually start to, to learn how to code uh, when, I was, when they was uh, 80. <laughs> and, uh, but for me, it was not a real problem, no? Because um, my main goal was only build something because I already had the job. So uh, my goal was uh, only build something. And uh, I start to learn uh, JavaScript. And uh, after that, I learned Python. And uh, also, I start to learn uh, Dart. Dart because uh, I would like to uh, create an application with Flutter. And uh, okay. Flutter, for me, is extremely cool that you can create uh, uh, something for iOS and Android at the same time with uh, one single code. But uh, working with Flutter, I also understand, I understood uh, one important thing about myself uh, that uh, I, I have no idea about uh, how Android works uh, and <laughs> I, okay. prefer, uh, I, I prefer uh, iOS and uh, the Apple devices uh, also because I use uh, an iPhone every day. So uh, for me, it was strange to build something for an operating system that really I don't know. So uh, I decided to um, put my effort to to put all my efforts uh, um, in uh, in the iOS and uh, macOS development, and I start studying a lot of different resources. Uh, more or less, okay. I build three different apps in a very short amount of time, and all these three apps was a complete failure. <laughs> <laughs> completely okay. failure less download and, how, do, how do you decide that an application is a failure like how much time do you give to an application so that you can decide okay now this much time has been passed i can call it a fail or maybe a pass i think that uh, is a mix of uh, feeling is a mix of uh, sensation because uh, uh, you, uh, you you understand that it's a failure when uh, you don't find a product market fit or you don't find a way to market your app. These are all things that I understood later. And uh, after three, uh, these three apps, uh, I understand one important thing, that uh, I need to approach uh, my path, my journey in a different way. Because uh, I'm not only uh, learn how to develop, but uh, I need to learn how to build uh, an app, uh, how to build a business. That is completely different. It's really Makes completely sense. different. And uh, for this reason, I start uh, um, another project, but uh, working uh, in a completely different way. I'm talking about uh, Astro. Astro is my current project that, that uh, I'm working on it uh, basically every day. And uh, Astro is an absolute optimization tool specifically for Apple developers. Respect to my previous project, uh, the approach was completely different because I started with um, researching the market. I discovered that basically there was a lot of different uh, absolute optimization tools on the market, but uh, the, um, the pricing of these tools uh, was uh, high. So okay. Looks like that uh, there was a niche of person that are indie developers that want to pay for something, that, but uh, they don't want to pay too much uh, for so much features. 
So uh, I decided to build something more simple than uh, the, the, my competitors, specific for Apple developers. Uh, and uh, I start my journey with, uh, with Astro that currently is my main source of revenue. Awesome, awesome. I think that has been a long journey already. And I think there's a long way to go, Matthew, for Astro app and for other new applications and products that you will be releasing in coming future. But let, let me take you back to uh, when you decided to build an application, right? Yeah. And it was your first iOS application, so to say. Mm -hmm. So how did you come across an idea for that? You, you said in between that now you have a different approach to build an application. Now you first research on the ideas and then you go about that. What used yeah. to go in your head when you, you were building your very first application or maybe your first three applications? I think that uh, my approach is completely changed during the years. Uh, and I changed my approach really fast. That is something that uh, is important for me. Uh, for me, it's not a failure if you learn something, no? It's a failure if you don't learn, you don't learn nothing about uh, what uh, you did. And um, I basically uh, create uh, something that uh, I know that really works. So my first app was uh, an app that reproduced um, uh, relaxing sounds. Okay. 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 I know that there is a market for uh, an app like this. I create a very cool interface. I create a very uh, cool UI. I put my effort to, to add uh, sounds. I study a lot to, to put all these sounds and so on. And after that, uh, I didn't receive any downloads. <laughs> and I have no how idea much, about how, how much market. time did you wait? How much time did you wait? Sorry to interrupt you in between. Uh, but this question is important to me. Mm -hmm. How much time did you actually wait to came to, to this decision that now that nobody's downloading the application, so I should I should just call it off or maybe mm -hmm. a go and then move to the next thing? Really, really fast because uh, in this specific time, uh, I was learning a lot. Build something, but at the same time, I was learning something else. So uh, I was uh, building an application and at the same time I was uh, learning how to market an application. And these two times at the same, uh, uh, proceeding with these two times at the same level, bring me to the decision that uh, this app was not so, um, was not a great idea. Uh, also, if uh, you can create an app like this and can be extremely successful, but uh, for my personal goal, for my life goals, uh, so, uh, I want to um, create a product that permit me to uh, quit with my daily job uh, in one year or two years was not the right decision. So okay. I, I decided to, uh, I start to thinking about uh, something like the pricing, the market, how to find customers, uh, how I much invest to um, bring people to use my apps. So I, I start to thinking about all this stuff together and uh, See, if you start thinking about all this stuff together, you immediately understand that uh, you need to put a lot of effort, really a lot of effort to make an app like this successful. And uh, yeah, and I decided that was not my path. Of course, um, I can, uh, watching back, uh, I can also uh, spend over six months uh, working on this app now, and probably uh, I can make some revenue from this, but was not my goal. Was My goal was proceed fast, uh, create another project and create something that the people really want to use and not something that the people like to use that is completely different. So how do you find this gap in the market, Matthew? What is your process of finding this gap? I, th I think we are going to classify our whole uh, process and the whole conversation of around this particular topic into three yeah. areas, ideation, execution, and marketing, right? Yeah. So in this ideation part, how did you come across these uh, gaps in the market where you decided, okay, I think this should be the thing that I should build so that I, I think that people will be using it. Yeah, so what for the first three, three apps uh, was a failure win. So I didn't find uh, this gap in the market. This is uh, the first approach. The second approach was after three failures, um, I understood that uh, I need to find uh, um, something uh, uh, that is really missing in the market. And uh, how I said you, um, for Astro was really simple because uh, 
in the meantime that I was working um, on these three apps, uh, I was studying uh, the app store optimization. The app store optimization is something um, really similar to search engine optimization, like for uh, Google, no? And uh, basically is search engine optimization for the app store or the play store of Google, uh, the play store of uh, Google, yes. Uh, is, uh, is something, is a topic that is extremely important if you want uh, that uh, your app are more visible inside the app store. And uh, in, when I was uh, uh, looking for this topic and uh, searching resources for uh, this topic, I was uh, uh, trying to um, track my keywords uh, in, in the various stores. So I decided to build um, a simple Python script uh, to track my keywords in the USA store, in the Italy store, France store, and so on. I was um, I published this, uh, this screenshot about uh, my, my script, uh, something really, really simple uh, on Twitter, and I started to receive some likes. And people that are interested in uh, what, I was, what I was doing. And uh, at this moment, I understood that, uh, OK, there is someone that is interested to this topic. So I can um, proceed uh, with um, other analysis. And I discovered what I said, you know, that uh, there was a market of uh, tools that was uh, expensive for an indie developer. But also, there was a lot of indie developers that uh, have the necessity to uh, perform a very good app store optimization for their apps, but at a lower price, at the right price. So these people uh, uh, don't want uh, a, an application that have uh, 1,000 features. These people want an application that have uh, a simple set of features that is simple to use, simple to understand, and permit them to track their keywords, understand how they are um, performing on the App Store, and in a very simple way. So I decided to understand if it uh, was possible to create something like this. And uh, more or less, I spent a lot of time uh, in the technical part. Uh, and after uh, a lot of study, I understood that it was possible to create something like this. And um, at this moment, and that moment was uh, born uh, Astro. Awesome. If somebody has to ideate in the same manner, like they want to build an application and they are not really sure about what idea they should pick, right? Yeah. Apart from using the Astro app, you know, to look yeah. out for maybe new ideas as well. I think that can help in this way as well, if uh, I'm not wrong. So what other way can they take, uh, which is not going through a, you know, tool or something? What other way they, they can take to figure out how the market is currently going, uh, what keywords are working in the market, what can be made and what cannot be? So uh, depends. The, the first point uh, is that you need to maintain your eyes open because uh, if you uh, look at the market, if you understand how the market works, uh, you, can, uh, um, you can create something that works. My uh, main goal at the moment uh, is uh, never create something that I can sell uh, to a lower price. This is my main point. And for lower price, I mean uh, uh, something like uh, a ten dollars uh, for years subscription. You know why? Because um, if you uh, have a lower subscription, I need a lot of users that use my app. Well, yeah, yeah, is something possible? But it's something that I can do at the moment because I have a full time job. I can dedicate all myself to build an audience and a lot of users to uh, and bring a lot of users to use my app. It's something that is possible, but is not possible for me. So I, des I decide to uh, uh, create app that have um, uh, a pricing that is higher. It's not so high, but is high. Uh, something like also for iOS, uh, something like um, fifty uh, dollars uh, at uh, year at least. And uh, when you decide to build something like this, uh, you automatically um, uh, discard a lot of uh, possibility. For which reason? 
because uh, if I uh, have an idea about, for example, uh, uh, an app that reproduces a relaxing sound, it's very simple now. I go on Astro, I search relaxing sound as keyword, I look at the top uh, competitors for this keyword, I look uh, how much they are selling their subscription, and uh, if they are selling their subscription for a lower price, uh, it's not my market. Okay. So in this way, I can discard a lot of ideas really, really fast. And for me, it is uh, extremely important because uh, if you invest six months of your uh, life building something that the people doesn't want or building something that uh, is complex to sell to others, yeah, you can do one time, two times, or three times like me, but after that uh, became really, really complex. And you need to be super focused, uh, not in, develop in the development part, uh, but in the previous part, when you need to choose your ideas. Matthew, what's the, re what's the reason behind having lower subscription prices for these applications? Like, what's the main reason behind that? Like you mentioned that you were looking for this application, Relaxing Sound, and you figured mm -hmm. that okay, the top listing application had very mm -hmm. lower prices for their subscription. Yeah. What is that main or maybe primary reason because of which they have to bring down their prices to that low? Uh, for, from my point of view, is the perception value of the users. The user don't perceive it that the, the value the, that the app have a high value. For this reason, are not uh, uh, willing to pay uh, a good amount of money for an early subscription, and this is uh, a real problem <laughs> because uh, uh, at the moment uh, all people think about uh, uh, how I can bring people to my app, how I can obtain downloads. But you need to understand that you need to think about how much I need to spend to bring people on my apps. And if you uh, start to make this calculation, you automatically understand that, uh, wow, it's difficult to sell something for $10 and spend 20 to, to download, for, so to, to bring someone to download my app. So what you mean by that is that if you're going to build an application, if you, if you pick an idea, then make sure that particular idea is a burning desire or maybe a pain point for the customer base that they're already already looking for. It should not be something that's a add on for them. That's a good to have thing. It should be yeah. a must to have thing for them. Absolutely. If they are, if they are your customer. Absolutely. That, does it make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we say it's not it's something like a vitamin or painkiller. No, you are building a vitamin, uh, something that uh, the user can uh, take, uh, that is very cool, uh, is super uh, interesting, but it's not something that they want. Uh, no? Right. So you need to build uh, a, a painkiller. That is something that the user need to pay for because it's something that they want. Right, right. And how easy or how often is the case that you are able to figure out such ideas which are actually some major pain points for the customers? So for Astro was uh, was easy, but uh, there was a lot of problem uh, before, uh, after uh, find the idea. Uh, because um, if you, is, uh, there is a simple trick. I mean, um, if you find something that permit to your customer to earn money with your idea, you are at the half of the job. Okay. So if your, if your uh, customers are earning money with uh, uh, your product, uh, it's very, very easy to sell something to them because they immediately recognize the value of your app. This is a, uh, is a, is a very simple trick to find this kind of idea that can perform well. And right. uh, at the moment, uh, I have customers that make uh, 1,000 more money than me. <laughs> thousand more money than me that is extremely cool that is my goal and um, and uh, this is uh, something that you can um, um, figure out when you uh, you are looking for new ideas if your ideas can permit to your customer to make money can be a good idea after that there is a, uh, the execution phase that is another problem is another fact is something completely uh, that we need to to talk about you know Makes sense. I mean, while building an application or while, you know, say the execution phase, uh, 
people who are working full time with the company uh, do not really have that much time to give or dedicate to uh, their side project or maybe in the application let's call let's call it that so what do you think how people can manage their time so that they are able to not just uh, give their time to their full time their family as well as to their indie project what can be a possible solution to that how are you approaching that and how do you approach that even these days uh, i would like to say that uh, there is a, a magic system to to manage your time uh, your family all this stuff together but the reality is uh, doesn't exist you need to put all yourself <laughs> <laughs> on what you are doing and okay. trying to do all your best to achieve your goals my main uh, um, my main trick is uh, uh, i because i completely um, uh, abandonate uh, all kind of uh, organization system. My main system is the write three things that scared you. Three things that make you anxiety, okay? Three things that, uh, uh, so when you uh, do these three things, uh, you feel like, uh, wow, I did it, <laughs> okay? And uh, if you, um, if you do these three things every day, your life should be absolutely better in the long term. But it's something that uh, requires uh, uh, a little bit of courage and uh, you need to uh, try to motivate yourself every day because um, when you are alone, you are building uh, an app uh, from yourself. There is no one that say you, hey, you need to do this. You need to do this. Okay, you need to do this, this other stuff, no? You are the only one that can say, okay, I need to do these things to uh, bring uh, uh, forward my project now. And this is something really cool because it gives you a lot of freedom, but at the same time, it's something that uh, can really penalize you because if you can't uh, understand which are the most important things to do, you will not go every anywhere. So you need to understand which are the, the most important things uh, to um, bring the project ahead. And um, something is really important uh, is um, you need to start uh, to think about uh, your company like a child. In my vision, no? yeah, like, uh, like your child, your, uh, your children, no? Because right. uh, uh, what I mean, I mean that uh, for your children, you need to be um, you need to be ready to do everything. Okay, there is nothing that uh, you can say no. This stuff is not for me. Okay, <laughs> you need to do it. Okay, and for this reason, uh, when you are building an app, we are uh, you, when you are building a company, is uh, like a child, and you need to um, to to do. The, the right things for uh, this child. For example, uh, I don't like uh, uh, create a video on YouTube. You need to create a video on YouTube because in this way, the people can find you. I don't like to write on Twitter because I'm an introvert. You need to right. write on Twitter because uh, the people can know you. Right. I don't like to uh, network with other people because I'm an introvert. You need to network with other people because uh, the people are the most important things that uh, uh, create a company, no? So you need to do all these things also if uh, I'm are not in your person. I think you said this uh, some minutes ago that uh, I used to focus on building an app before and now I focus more on building a business, right? Yeah. So what's the difference? That's completely different <laughs> because, uh, <laughs> yeah, developers building an app. Uh, if you are an entrepreneur or you want to build a business, you need to build a business. It's something completely different. You are focused on code or you are focused on uh, grow. You are focused on the product or you are focused on how to write uh, the best line of code. For me, is my priority is uh, bring value to more people as possible with my apps, okay? And uh, bring value to most people as possible means uh, a lot of different things. Means uh, create a very good um, uh, software, but at the same time is uh, bring this software uh, in front of much people I can, because uh, otherwise I can bring them value. So uh, brings a lot of different things. 
so you mean like uh, as a business you are more particular about the like overall growth of whatever yeah. you are doing you know than just focusing on making the architecture as best uh, as possible or making the each line of code as best as possible yeah got it so how much time do you spend over the week matthew in building the application or maybe building on a new feature or maybe fixing or maintaining a new feature yeah um depends depends of the months depends of the time depends of the lot of different things uh, i spent usually my weekends entirely work on astro that is not work on uh, uh, simply on uh, add new features but also for example create documentation or also uh, improve my landing page or so create new tweets or so uh, create um, uh, contents to bring astro to the people for example, um, uh, one of the best strategy that uh, I used to, um, to, to bring people to Astro was uh, uh, write two books. I wrote two books about app store optimization and these two books was uh, extremely useful to uh, permit to the user to try Astro for the first time. Because uh, in these two books that was uh, extremely short, I teach you everything you need to learn to start with App Store optimization. And uh, when you start with App Store optimization, the first question that you have is, uh, okay, how can I track uh, my keywords? And the solution is uh, Astro. And uh, this was a, a very simple way to bring people to, to, to Astro. And uh, for me, it's not only a matter of uh, create new functionality, create new features, create new stuff. My, um, my main point is uh, uh, find something that really help users. And uh, I need to be completely sure that uh, what I'm building is really important for the user. For example, in Astro, there is a, a, a future that uh, no more, not a lot of other App Store optimization to have, that is uh, the automatic translation future. So basically you can insert your DeepL API key and uh, your deep API key permits you to automatically translate keyword from uh, Japanese to English directly inside the app without copy and paste and Google Translate 1000 times. This was something really simple, but can bring a lot of value to your end user. So I prefer to um, wait for feedback to more users and one, one user ask one thing, the same, the same, the same from one user, you have the, the right functionality to build. And I spent my time building this functionality. Amazing. What's, what's your process of building an application, Matthew, uh, in the sense that uh, when you release your first beta version, uh, mm -hmm. until you release your first public version, like uh, how much time do you take to build a uh, beta and maybe uh, taking to the public? And what is your actual process of doing doing so? Like, do you have a closed community or a private community that gives you feedback in your beta or something like yeah. that? <clears throat> uh, now I think that is more easy for me because I have uh, a follow on on Twitter, uh, but uh, is not. Uh, uh, is I think that is easy if I ca if I create another product for uh, indie developers, but. Uh, it's not, uh, uh, it's not more easy if I create a product for another niche, no? So I think that uh, at the moment, uh, the best way to analyze uh, if your product uh, has uh, a future is building something really, really, really fast. If I'm talking about an, an iOS app, for example, building something in one week or at least two weeks, uh, two weeks and uh, uh, bring the app on the App Store and uh, start to performing a base of App Store optimization. You need to add uh, at least uh, 10 or 13 uh, different languages in order to have a very good uh, base.
because uh, if you obtain, for example, 100 downloads that are uh, in all the words uh, spread around the words, uh, your keywords uh, don't go up, okay? But if you obtain, for example, 100 downloads in Italy, in one single store, your keyword in Italy go up. For that particular region? Yeah, for that particular region. This is really important. The, uh, the download need to be store specific. So download in Italy, if you, want, if you want grow in Italy, you need to launch a Facebook campaign, for example, in Italy. If you want to grow in France, you need to launch an Instagram campaign in France, not worldwide. You need to focus on single stores. And uh, uh, the most important thing is also when you start to building an MVP, you need to have a pricing in mind immediately because you right. need to start sell your app at the first day. When you start to publish your app, you need to start to sell because um, in this way, you can also use uh, um, uh, paid advertising like Apple, like Apple search ads that really right. permit you to understand if your app is available for the users. For example, one important thing is before develop an app, perform an app store optimization research. Because if I, I already know that there is zero traffic for the app that I'm building, okay, <laughs> why, you are be <laughs> why you are building this app, okay? <laughs> this is the first step. Uh, you can take Castro, uh, you can start uh, uh, searching for uh, an app store optimization um, for uh, your keywords uh, and uh, start to understand if there is traffic. Okay, if there is traffic, you can start to optimize your app for before publish it. And after that, you can point on Apple search ads on one specific store, some money, to understand if someone buy your app. Okay. And in this phase, it's really important that you have an analytic on place on your app. You need to understand everything about how the users uh, use your app. And this is a, a very controversial point because uh, uh, some developers say, I don't want to say, uh, I don't want to know nothing about my user because I respect their privacy. But uh, you are. Contrary. Yeah, you are respecting their privacy, but you are not respecting your product because you know yeah. nothing about your product. My point of view is that you need to respect the privacy of the user, of course, because you don't need to have data on the users, but you right. need to have data on your app. This is really important. Are two completely different things. Are two different things. You need to have data about your app. And... Uh, when you have data, you need to uh, proceed in a SQL way to understand what, what I can improve in this, uh, in this paywall, what I can improve in this onboarding uh, flow, what I can improve uh, in my app, why the user don't see value in my app, and so on. This is really important in the first phase. And if you, if you obtain sales during the first phase, uh, you are you are making a good job, at least, and you know that you are making something that the people want to use. What are tools do you use that makes your life easy as an indie developer? Because we talked about analytics just now. So are there any other tool which help us apart from Google Analytics maybe? Are there any yeah. other tools maybe that yeah. can help us? Yeah. There are different tools. Uh, for example, uh, Firebase is the most uh, famous for sure because they uh, integrate uh, Google Analytics uh, that is uh, necessary and uh, Crashlytics that is also really important to understand if the app has some crashes and so on. There is also Telemetry Deck that is a more privacy friendly solution uh, for, um, for uh, indie developers. There is also, uh, of course, Astro, because uh, now with Astro, I can perform an app optimization research in five minutes and discard any kind of idea that um, doesn't have uh, a real value for the user because the user are not actively search for a solution to a problem. Right. And uh, after that, I, 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 of course, use Postman a lot to to test my API and so on. And uh, I don't use so much tool. Awesome. So you build your APIs by yourself? You mentioned in the beginning that you started with JavaScript, right? 
Uh, not exactly, not exactly, not for Astro. Uh, okay. I um, I'm planning to add some part of Astro that have a backend, but not at the moment because uh, Astro works completely with uh, Apple API that are not public. These API are not public, but Astro works with the backend of Apple. And uh, so at the moment, I'm using only the backend of Apple to, to, to Astro. So I don't need uh, any backend from myself uh, to, oh, to. I remember your tweet saying uh, some API broke or something like that happened yeah. on this week, right? Yeah. Apple's and and uh, you're running a CL at that point. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I have uh, different funny days when uh, Apple decides to change uh, <laughs> a comma in the code. <laughs> I have to rebuild my entire app from scratch. How how easy or dependent is it to use such uh, APIs, Matthew? Like, is it good to uh, depend your whole product on uh, a third party? Like in your case, I don't think there is any workaround for this, right? Because only Apple can give you those yeah. data that you are There is no workaround of this. Uh, was one of the, my main concern when I start to work on Astro because uh, you know you are basically uh, your business depends from someone else. But uh, right. But uh, at the same time, I can say you when you put one app on the App Store, your business depends from Apple. So say if Apple decide to your app is not so good. Uh, is deleted and you can do nothing about this. So you you are always we we all depend from something, no? And um, so is a, is a risk, of course, but is a risk that I decide to 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 take because there are a lot of different apps or optimization tool on the market that works from uh, uh, ERs, and uh, so uh, is something that uh, is is possible. Uh, uh, to do okay okay that makes sense I, I hear a lot of people especially on twitter making a lot of noise about mrr these days right so mm -hmm. what is this mrr for our audience and uh, is it the only thing that you should have in mind from day one while building something or or is there something else that you should focus on in the beginning days yeah, uh, basically we are talking about uh, monthly recurring revenue and uh, the answer to this question is uh, yes, because <laughs> because uh, money pick your bills and money pick your rent, no? Uh, so, uh, is, um, the, obviously, depends from your, uh, your personal goal, not your business goal, your personal goal. For, uh, for example, if my personal goal is create uh, a, uh, an app that help people to, I don't know, to relax or uh, um, take, a, uh, take a break and uh, discard the anxious and so on. If this is my life goals, uh, I can build an app without uh, pay attention to monthly recurring revenue. But at the same time, if your goal is to quit your daily job and, uh, and work as uh, independent developers, you need to uh, bring attention to this uh, value every day because it is something that pay your rent, it's something that pay your bills. So it's really important from my point of view, it's something that uh, you need to uh, work on it every day, also because uh, it's the only value that uh, can um, give you uh, an exact overview about uh, how is going your business, no? It's something that grow, you are going well. It's something that decrease, uh, you are not going so well. So is a, for me, is a key indicator. Okay, okay. And uh, since you are working alone and you, know, uh, you are the only one who is building Astro App, yeah. Uh, what do you think about the future of this application? What do you think? How, when will you make your first maybe intern uh, on board in your team when, you know, you'll have to delegate some work? Like, is that a case that you think of these days or you have a, like, st you still have some time to reach to that goal? Uh, in my, uh, in my project, I have different step, uh, my, my different steps. Uh, the first one is, uh, quit my, with my daily job. Otherwise, I don't have the time to work full time to Astro and to grow Astro uh, more fast. If I quit my job, I have more time, I can grow Astro more fast. This is my first step. Uh, 
The second step after growing Astro fast uh, is uh, find someone to work on it uh, to delegate uh, all the uh, development process. Why the development process? Uh, because uh, um, the part of the development for sure is something that uh, uh, takes you a lot of time. And uh, I want to focus my F, all my effort to bring more people in front of Astro and uh, sell Astro to more people. It's very simple. If you don't sell your product, this product will fail. And uh, also if your idea, idea is very cool and there are a lot of people that say you, uh, can, you cannot tease, you cannot tease, you cannot tease. You need to think about uh, if I don't sell this idea to other people, I can add nothing. <laughs> Not that this future, I can add nothing. So uh, this is, for me, the most important part. And uh, if I find someone to delegate the development process, the development part, I can focus all myself to grow Astro and to grow the business and uh, bring more value also to the users. Nice. I really like how passionate you are in uh, talking about building the business because we as a developer uh, generally will find as a developer mindset that people romanticize uh, building something only right yeah uh, creating something building a new feature or adding this to the ui or that but when i talk to you specifically i i really resonate with your mindset in this way because you are more focused on not just building the product but also making sure that that it's growing uh, with what objective you had for that product in mind right yeah. otherwise building a beautiful product a uh, robust application and whatever like fancy words you can use for that application if no customer is going to use that then it's just you know waste of time yeah yeah right? or you can call it a learning <laughs> yeah you can yeah. do it for learning for sure but uh, depends for uh, from your life goal and uh, right. it's not a matter of uh, business goals but it's a matter of life goals you need to yeah. understand uh, which are your life goals right now let's talk about the marketing, Matthew. You talked mm -hmm. about uh, two books that you wrote, right, for yeah. the uh, ASO, I believe, and uh, all the other things that you do on Twitter. I, I keep, uh, you know, looking at some of your tweets uh, mm -hmm. here and there. So, what is your approach towards marketing as a developer? Uh, because this is again a myth, I think, in the community that uh, many developer are very shy uh, when it comes to marketing something. Mm -hmm. Even when you have made your own product, you have put a lot of hour, hours or maybe weeks or maybe months to it, people shy away from marketing it explicitly. Yeah. yeah. Because they think that people will get offended or maybe somebody will think that, you know, why you are marketing this and why yeah. you are trying to sell it to us. What yeah. is your uh, marketing strategy and what do you think about this particular type of mindset when people talk about marketing? Yeah, I think that uh, is a mindset that uh, came from uh, a lot of different factors. Uh, so um, basically, we we always uh, think that the marketing uh, marketing is something that is not good. No, is someone that try to sell you uh, some something and try to force you to buy something. This is the marketing for uh, the ninety percent of the people. The marketing is something completely different. The marketing is uh, give the opportunity to someone to know something that really can change their life, that really can improve their life. And uh, if you start thinking about, uh, uh, if you start thinking to the marketing in this way, your entire vision about the marketing change because uh, you are trying to change the life of someone, you are trying to improve the life of someone, okay? Uh, you need to uh, obviously depend uh, depends from your product depends on what you are building and so on but for example for astro i'm trying to um, permit to the user to discover a product that really can bring them more downloads can bring them more revenue and uh, for this reason why i should be shy to show my product to someone I want to demonstrate them that really you can take some result with my product because uh, it's important for them and it's also important for me because I want to grow this product. 
And uh, I think that we need to completely change our vision about the marketing, our perception about the marketing. And um, about uh, this, uh, I also can suggest you the, the book uh, about uh, of Seth Godin, uh, This is the Marketing. This is a very cool book that explains exactly what is the marketing and why the marketing is something really good uh, for your product. All right. And what is your approach? Like, what's your personal approach towards marketing Astro app? Uh, like, what if I if you have to suggest somebody today that now that you are done with building your, building your application and now you have published it to the App Store or Play Store, mm -hmm. uh, whichever type of application you have built, what steps you can take to market it today? Depends. <laughs> uh, I explain you why. <laughs> But if you take a generic framework in mind, what can be suggested? Yeah, uh, the, so my first approach is uh, understand uh, also before build an app uh, is understand how I can market an app. There are app that are uh, uh, for uh, for nature are really viral, okay? Because uh, are app that uh, that have some cool features that you can share on Instagram and automatically you obtain downloads. Uh, there are app. Uh, for example, Astro. Astro is an app com very complex to sell because you need to um, perform a customer journey. You need to bring someone that doesn't know nothing about App Store optimization or no less information about App Store optimization to um, a conscious customer that know about uh, App Store optimization and want to buy a software. For this reason, I wrote two books about this topic. This is the reason. And for every app is different. Uh, for some app, you need to work on uh, search engine optimization because you can uh, obtain more downloads from, uh, from directly from Google. From uh, some app, you can work on uh, viral uh, TikTok or video. The uh, one important thing to understand is uh, there is not uh, the right platform where to advertise. For example, someone say uh, Twitter is the right platform. Why? Or X is the right platform. Why? Depends where are your users. If your users are on TikTok, you need to go on TikTok. If your users are on Instagram, you need to go on Instagram. And this is really important. You need to find where are your users and try to find a, a way to, um, to, to promote your app to your user. For example, on Instagram, you can open account, you can create, uh, uh, you can work with the content marketing. And uh, for example, for Astro, I created a YouTube channel. And also for Astro, I understood that it's very important that people uh, uh, see you. It's something that uh, today in the today world was something that uh, looks like not important. But if someone see you, and uh, understand that there is someone, that there is really someone that works behind the product are really more happy to pay you for your product and uh, are more um, willing to pay you because they know you. They know who uh, is Matteo, okay? And, uh, but there are a lot of different strategies to market an application. So uh, the app store optimization, you need to um, work to your marketing when we talk about uh, iOS app like uh, a pyramid, okay? The base of the pyramid is uh, the app store optimization. If you start with an app with uh, uh, um, incorrect app store optimization, you are automatically losing downloads. This is your base. Okay. After, after that, uh, there are the downloads. The downloads is important to understand that doesn't matter which is uh, the source of these downloads. The only thing that matters is the number of downloads because if you obtain a lot of downloads, your keywords go up. This is the only algorithm that works. There is not black magic uh, behind the app store. <laughs> it's very, very simple. You need to obtain a lot of downloads. And uh, at the end of the pyramid, there are the ratings. If you need to, if you obtain downloads, you need also ask ratings a lot with your user and uh, uh, in order to have a testimonial and also to increase your ranking on other keywords. Right. Can you suggest 
uh, by taking examples, let's say if somebody is building an application uh, for day planner, okay? So for day planner, I believe there is no one type of audience that you can approach for it. Like you can obviously approach a certain region's audience for mm -hmm. sure, but there is no one type of audience that will be looking forward to having a, a day planner application, right? It's not mm -hmm. a developer audience or it's not a non-developer audience. It can be anyone out of them. Okay. So what approach should one take if they are building a say day planner application? Yeah. What, what platform they can choose and what two, three activities should they do on that platform that make them stand out? I think that the main point is uh, day planner is uh, too generic. So my first thing, uh, the, my first um, action will be probably how can create a day planner for a specific niche of people that are willing, my pay, uh, willing to pay my app. Okay, so I will start to research the market to find a niche of people that need a day planner for their work, for example. If uh, we, we back to the previous trick, no? If uh, I can help you with your work, you are more incentivated to pay me for my app. After that, uh, I start to discover keywords for uh, this niche of people. And I want to understand if uh, these people really are, are, are actively looking for a solution to the problem. Because uh, there are two kinds of problems. The problem that the people really want to solve and the problem that the people simply don't want to solve. <laughs> they, <laughs> they want uh, simply they maintain this problem because it is not so important for them. And uh, we need to understand at this point uh, simply performing an absolute optimization research. If there is uh, researches uh, about this specific problem, we can start uh, to building uh, an app uh, on this specific problem. How um, you can uh, uh, you can see I started uh, you 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 start uh, talking about I created the daily planner, right? No, I right. started before not to create uh, the daily planner. I started also before because uh, I start to work on the idea. I start to work on the niche. I start to work on uh, a lot of different factor that bring me to create uh, not a daily planner, but something that is tailor made for a specific category. And this is my approach. I'm not saying that is the only one approach that we can use. There are different approach, but this is the approach that I use for my current life goals. So maintain a nine price and uh, sell my apps to a nine price. After that, after have uh, a niche, I have found a market, the next step is understand how to market my app, which are the channels that permit you, me to bring people to my app. I can find influencer, I can find uh, other people uh, that, um, that work in this specific category. And uh, I can uh, contact them and uh, uh, have a discussion for them. I start to asking uh, to, to myself all these questions in order to understand if I really have a marketing plan for this app. And if I have a marketing plan, yes, I can build this app, I can work on this app. Awesome. By what you just said, uh, Matthew, I, I understood that. Uh... I, correct me if I'm wrong on this. Yeah. So if you are building an application and that has a generic audience or a customer base these mm -hmm. days, like basically yeah. in 2023 or say 2024 and onwards, then you should try to niche it down to uh, build, like you should try to niche it down in, in a way that you have a specific type of customer base that you can serve to. And that will not just solve the problem of marketing for you, but also it is going to be business friendly eventually. Yeah. Yeah, but right. uh, what I'm saying is not that uh, it's not possible to create a generic app. There are a lot of generic app that are extremely successful and really we know different uh, notes app, for example. No? We uh, right. talk about uh, Obsidian, I talk about Evernote. There are a lot of uh, note app. But what I'm saying is that succeed with uh, this type of uh, generic app is extremely complex. If I right. want to increase my, um, my uh, possibility to succeed, I need to uh, create something really specific. 
probably in the future, if I have more money to invest in marketing, I can also create a generic app, no? Because you can invest a lot of money and you can obtain downloads, you can obtain users and so on. But uh, as solo developer, building a generic app is extremely, extremely difficult. And uh, you can do it. I know different people that uh, do it, really. Uh, they did it. And, uh, but the problem is, uh, okay, you did it. Very good. But you can replicate it. Exactly. exactly. This is uh, the main point. You can replicate what you did. It's like uh, somebody is thinking that, you know, if they make the same application as Astro app, they will be able to grab the same audience that Astro already has, right? Yeah. That's not possible. That's like more or less uh, daydreaming, right? Uh, it, it takes time and I think it has, uh, your application specifically has taken some time to grasp the ground, the audience. Yeah. And, and that, uh, you know, sort of brings me to this question that when you just started off with Astro app, right? Mm -hmm. When you saw the first traction to the application, how important do you think at that point is branding, right? Because for anyone who is coming to your application for the very first time, he or she doesn't know shit about branding, shit about Astro app. So what do you think about branding, uh, you know, bringing in branding to your product? And do you think it is important for anyone in the indie space? Uh... Yes or no, <laughs> because um, at the same time, um, uh, the UI, the branding of your product, it's really important that have uh, a very cool aspect. Uh, but uh, I think that, uh, for example, there are amazing designers that create apps that are uh, a masterpiece, really a masterpiece. I uh, use this app and I watch this, uh, I see this app and say, wow, it's amazing. All the buttons, all the 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 the, the stuff, uh, uh, the, how the, the the components are placed, all the stuff are amazing. Uh, the problem is uh, the um, that an app is not only uh, UI, is not only branding, is not only is a mix of things. So I saw different apps, uh, different services uh, with a very poor uh, level of UI, of uh, design, of branding, uh, with logo that uh, looks like sketch from uh, uh, <laughs> a child of uh, one year, and uh, all these stuff that uh, are extremely successful. My, my main point is uh, you need to focus uh, on real problem. For example, if you understand that your problem is uh, the branding because uh, uh, you receive feedback that uh, your logo is ugly i don't know you need to focus uh, to solve this problem but uh, uh, you need to focus uh, to solve the problem that you are re that you really have not something that you don't have the your main point at the beginning is uh, uh, create something that is valuable for the people and uh, I personally believe that uh, if the icon of Astro is uh, more cool uh, or more uh, three-dimensional three or something like this, is not so important for my users at the moment. In the future, I will, um, I will improve all uh, these, uh, these uh, particulars, these details, uh, but uh, not at the moment. What you mean by that is the only thing that matters in the beginning is the offering that you are you know, giving at the end of the day not anything else apart from that. If you are giving something that is valuable to the end user and they are actually looking out for that solution, then you're good to go. You don't yeah. have to have a fancy UX or UI. Yeah. You can have a basic one and then you can evolve as a product. Yeah. You, you, the details don't, doesn't matter at the beginning. The details matter when you reach a certain amount of revenue. Right. Yeah. Right. Because uh, you, at the beginning, there is uh, only one thing that is extremely important. Only one. Understand if your idea is uh, really valuable for the users. If your idea is really valuable for the user, you, 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 you found the path that you can follow. I think we discussed a lot of uh, insights and you know, useful and valuable thing today about uh, the indie app development scene. And I think this will be very valuable for the people who are currently listening to us or are going to listen to us. Uh, uh, Matthew, I would like to ask you uh, in the end of this uh, episode that what are your plans with Astro app and with the other future products that you might uh, be thinking of or, will, or you will build? So what are your plans for the next one or two years? Uh, 
Yeah, my, my plan, my life goal, because uh, I, uh, I start always to, um, to talk about my life goals. And after my life goals, there are my business goals. My life goals is uh, quit my daily job and obtain more time. So oh, this is my life goal. With uh, uh, achieving this goal, I can uh, uh, work more on Astro, uh, uh, develop more futures, and uh, create an app that is always better for uh, my users, uh, and uh, improve the community, improve the, the marketing, uh, and all these kind of stuff that are really making, uh, that, uh, that are really made, uh, I simply want to, improve everything that I'm really doing. I'm, I'm really doing. And uh, this is the, the, the main idea. After that, I won't create other product because uh, I think that for an indie developer, it is important to have uh, multiple products. Uh, uh, yeah, for diversification, because uh, if uh, someone, uh, some someday Astro, uh, for some reason, uh, don't bring me a revenue, I want to... Right. Uh, Maintain. I don't want uh, to uh, find me in the situation where I don't have a work. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so for this reason, I want to build something else also in the future. But if I can quit my job uh, was, uh, was simple, no? Because you have more time, you have more, uh, uh, more idea, you have a lot of uh, right. more possibility. So uh, I think that... Uh, uh, you, uh, it's important that people uh, give us uh, life goals and not business goals because uh, your life is the most important thing that you have yeah. and your business needs to be uh, something that supports your life, not something that... Uh, is your life. Uh, yeah, is your life. You need to change your mind, it is, no? Right. Uh, right. For me, uh, this is the right approach. Awesome. If you don't mind me asking this, how much money is good money for you? Like how much money can buy you back your time, say in terms of MRR? Okay, no, uh, I have uh, different uh, uh, goals uh, in mind now. Uh, the, the first one is uh, to quit my, my job. Uh, I have to arrive at least uh, to 50,000 uh, euros uh, at um, yearly. Right. to quit my job and uh, at the same time uh, my my goal is arrive at least uh, to uh, 10,000 monthly recurring revenue and this is my my goal for for the future and i hope to arrive to the this, to this goal uh, uh, fast uh, because uh, you know uh, the the beginning is, is always the the most complex uh, part you know Right. Uh, when you find uh, the, you can also find the product market fit like uh, me for Astro, but uh, I can say you that there was a lot of moment where I really said, wow, it's uh, really complex. <laughs> it's something that uh, is extremely I can complex. With you on that. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you 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 say that uh, if you continue to work uh, on your product, if you know that your product uh, has value, at some point uh, your revenue will increase uh, and uh, right. is uh, something exponential. It's not something that uh, in one year I made one thousand dollars a month. Uh, the second year I will make the two thousand dollars. No, the second year we will make the four thousand right. dollars. It's something exponential, no? Exponential growth. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I hope to arrive to to this moment uh, fast, uh, and after that uh, I want to start continue to work Astro, to work on Astro every day, and to grow Astro every day and other products. Awesome, man. I, I really love this uh, faster approach and passion for this growth mindset. I mean, uh, that is commendable and I really appreciate that. And I, I wish you all the best with Astro app uh, for Thank the coming you. future. I just hope that every wish that you have with Astro, all the goals that you have with it, they get fulfilled in the next one or two years. And as soon as possible, I should, I should say, not just one or two years, right? So on that note, Matthew, what last message do you have for all the listeners to this podcast? I think that uh, the most important thing that you you need to understand uh, if you want to do uh, something similar, if you want to uh, become an indie developer, is uh, you need to start. 
you need to start and uh, go fast. Don't be uh, shy about your failure because your failure uh, make you the person that you are. So are something that are really valuable and uh, teach you a lot of things. And uh, stop uh, uh, reading uh, startups books because uh, <laughs> this book <laughs> doesn't teach you nothing about the startup world probably. And you need to start fail really. And right. you need to um, start to making something that scare you really. And, right. uh, and when you find something that really scare you, is the right thing to do <laughs> for my point of view. Makes sense. Well, well, that was a great message. And uh, I think on that note, we can wrap up this episode. And once okay. again, thank you so much for taking out time for- You're welcome. It was a pleasure. Yeah, I hope you all liked it. And if you really liked it, then please make sure that you subscribe to the channel for more such podcasts coming in the future and follow Matthew on Twitter. I'll give his a Twitter uh, link in the description box along with the app Astro, which we talked about today. And we discussed a lot of things. If you are starting with building an application, your indie, indie application, then Astro is something that should be there in your arsenal. So if there would be any discounts or anything like that, I'll also link that in the description box. Uh, so once again, thank you so much guys for watching and thank you so much, Matthew, for making it happen. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye everyone. Awesome.